Hey, good morning again. Hope you got your coffee. It's going to be a long day. I know, I know, I know. Um, you didn't expect to have to work this hard at this age, right? You figured, you know, you'd rest on your laurels, ride someone else's coattails, maybe mom or dad get you, get your job, and you can go out gracefully. Well, that's not the case. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to put some effort in. But let me give you a little secret. You'll like doing this, right? You'll enjoy it. All right, so this is part two, annotating with tags. With tags. So we talked a little bit about um, um, this particular portion of this exercise, uh, orientating them and, and loading them, assigning leaders to them. But now, let's, let's delve in a little further. Let's take a look now at uh, using these tags a little more. Now I'll read verbatim, using the tag tool set. Now, using the tag tool set, on the end, you'll find several tools that you can use to insert tags. Look back at the figure, and um, you'll see these tools. Each has a different purpose and can be used in conjunction with other tools or separately to help document your project. Let's take a look at several important tools on the Annotate tab. Now, tag by category. Let's read the tool tip first, and the shortcut key is, is uh, just that. It's a shortcut key. Double-edged sword. Don't trip. Don't trip while you're doing this. Don't short out. This is, um, you can do this. This is not an insurmountable task. Again, I'm just, you know, it's a laborer from uh, Prospect Avenue, down by the hook. What I know. In any event, listen, anyone, if you decide to better yourself, you can pick yourself up, dust yourself off, make a plan, and implement it. Tag by category. It attaches a tag to an element based on the element category. Before using a tag tool, load desired tags into the project. The tag by category button is possibly one of the most frequently used tag commands. As we mentioned before, several tags are available allowing you to tag a host of elements in the model. Tag, uh, click the tag by category button when you want to tag one element at a time, regardless of its category. Using this command will allow you to select a door, a window, a wall, whatever single element you want to apply a tag in the model, apply a tag to in the model. As you hover over elements, the tag type that corresponds to that element will be shown. Should the element you are trying to tag not have the associated tag loaded into the project, you will be prompted to load it. So let's go through that. As you hover over certain items, that you're able to tag, you'll um, see that it will indeed place a tag if uh, a tag is loaded for that category. As you can see, a wall category isn't loaded. And a stair tag is different. You have a special tag for that. But um, there's not really much in here. The door tag is loaded. You see that it's tagging it with a door, uh, a door schedule tag, right? And the uh, windows. It's the only two, and the areas if they were on, right? If the areas on, we could put an area tag in. All right, so now that's um, tag by category. And again, if there's no tag, you'll you'll see, you'll get, you, you, you may get a, a, an error message or just a um, question mark because it doesn't know uh, what to extract from it. it, does, it it's not being, um, it's, it's, its function is not defined. So um, let's just hold that thought for now, and we're going to get into this a little more. Just hold that thought. Tag all. The tag all button, which activates the tag all, not tagged command, will do exactly that. Tag all the untagged elements of a selected category within a view. For example, you can tag all the doors. Let's do that. Let's give them a leader. Let's see how it comes out. As you can see, 
it's a double door, and it counted them. Well, it's not a double door. It's actually doors, curtain wall, single glass, curtain wall, single glass. Uh, it was placed in there twice. So it's, it's, it's counting uh, each of them independently and reporting them on the schedule. And as you can see over here, these were already tagged, I believe. Um, and the, these, these here don't have any data associated with them. Let's make sure, yeah, these two here, I have to, uh, I have to delve into that, why these aren't tagged correctly. But you understand what uh, the concepts I'm trying to give you, um, convey to you. Um, it's pretty powerful. And as opposed to assigning a property set definition to something in AutoCAD, MEP, AutoCAD architecture, uh, and creating uh, all of the different types of functions, tag, you know, you've seen the property set, property set definition dialog box. Uh, and all the formulas that you can use with an AutoCAD architecture, AutoCAD MEP. And again, yes, it has that same similar functionality, but this takes it to so much more of a higher level. And anyone who's worked with AutoCAD MEP or AutoCAD architecture, which is pretty much the same thing, um, will understand what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, this this really drills home the need for the uh, and the, the 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 parametric bi-directional associativity that, that is required in, in, in these, the speed of these projects. Again, you, you want to get them as efficiently designed and efficiently constructed uh, as, as fast as you can. 4D time plays into this. And again, I can't slow down because someone may be looking for a solution. Now, um, or you could take all doors, walls, and rooms, or any combination of any list of elements. When you select the tag all command, the tag all not tag dialog box will appear. Let's do it again. Now tag, tag all. Tag all not tag dialog box will appear. And as you can see, um, I could select all of them, right? Let's just take a quick peek at the, the view on the right. Let's just uh, see how it, uh, what, what, what it will apply. And it didn't apply anything. Let's go to the second floor. Because these are probably already used. Tag all that are not tagged. So everything's tagged here. Uh, let's see what's going on on the roof. Anything we could tag here? Um, uh, not really. Maybe area plans. Let's see what we got here. Let's go to the area plans. Let's see if we can take some stuff here in area plans. Annotate. Tag all. We'll tag up. Well, only selected objects in the current view or all objects in current view. So include elements from linked file. So these are the options, and they're going to get into that. Um, but hold on, let me just uh, let me just apply this and see if it, uh, the visibility graphic settings is set to hide the category in the view. You want to enable it? Yeah. So this rooms uh, category, which I want to tag, is hidden from the view to the, through the visibility graphics overrides for this particular view. Uh, it's the platform is intuitive enough to see that what you're attempting to see what you're attempting to do, and it's guiding you along the way. And you get that from time to time. Uh, you, you wish you'd got it more, uh, I, the truth of the matter, but uh, that's not the case. You do get it from time to time. And it's very helpful. So let's see. Boom. That's it. Was it tagged? Uh, all the windows. And, and if I move this tag out of the way, the services, uh, the room tag and the area tag um, are on top of each other. So you may have to to move that around a little bit, right? But uh, there's some work for you to do here. But that's the power of it. You don't have to go in here and, and create text items, uh, simple, single-line text, and denote it. You won't survive. If this is your intent, to, is to do this work in any capacity, you won't be able to keep up. And, and granted, don't get me wrong, there are people right now in offices getting paid to do it the way they're doing it. And they're still getting a check. And... That's the beauty of this. For those that aren't paying attention, that's the beauty of this. The competitive nature. There's a lot of people, and organizations, large organizations, that have people in positions of power that aren't cognizant of, of utilizing a computer as a tool. And, and, and again, I'm not Mother Teresa. And when it comes to business, it comes to business. Now, let's Cosine tiny. I want this information to be conveyed to you tangentially. I'm not asking you to come knocking at my door and let's talk shop, right? With this, the beauty of this is, can we pull 
this off? Can we pull this off on the sneak, <laughs> right? And, and let's see if we can pull this off on the sneak. And uh, let's see if, it's a game, right? Granted, I'm still gonna have to go work in these firms to earn a living, but I wanna see if we can pull this off as an organization, as a corporation, on the sneak, tangentially. Because again, if you give away all your industrial trade secrets, well, that's a problem as well, right? Isn't that a problem? You don't see companies knocking on other companies' doors saying, hey, look what we just figured out. Well, granted, Uncle Sam kind of does. Uncle Sam kind of takes all this technology and keeps it close to the vest. For example, he probably wouldn't want to share all this shit with the Chinese. <laughs> a bad example. A good example. It's a good example. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent. That beep was meant for me. All right, so now, tag all. That's a... Uh, that's pretty much a pretty powerful tool, as you can see. Um, now, um, the, the, that dialog box displays a list of the elements in the view for which you have already loaded tags. Here, you can specify which elements can get tagged, what tag will be used, and if that tag will have a leader assigned to it. And again, I'll just open it up again so you can see. And I know this is running long because I'm going off on a tangent. I'll read it as we go. Here, you can specify which elements can be, get tagged, which, what tag will be used, and if that tag will have a leader assigned to it, use the control key on your keyboard to select more than one element from the list. When you've selected the categories you would like tagged, click OK. Tagging all elements within a view can be a wonderful time saver, but only if you're OK with the software choosing the location of the tags. For example, the tags will be placed in the middle of the rooms for most spaces. That will work just fine. For other tag types, such as walls or doors, you might have to adjust tag locations to make sure everything reads properly. So there'll be some manual labor involved in it. You may have to use your mouse. God forbid. <laughs> IBM Watson. Room tag and area tag. These two tag types work in much the same way, and we've discussed this earlier. They will tag the room elements or area elements, depending on the type of view in which you happen to be in. In other words, room tags will work only in plans and innovations, whereas area tags can be placed only in area plans. To tag rooms or areas, simply select the area, the tag type you want and select the room or area object. When you place rooms or areas, initially the tag option is selected by default. So that command is in the room tag or the area tag. And I'm not going to read the tooltip because I just did it, and I'm not going to go through the exercise because you already know how to do it. But just, I'll leave you with this caveat on this one. The room reference lines and the area reference lines are going to need to be shown in the view so that you, ha you have something to select, right? In the visible graphics override dialog box for the view. If it is off, what are you going to pick, right? Well, you can't pick it. So you have to go to pick it. Right? Don't forget your pick. Now, material tag. The material tag is used to annotate specific materials within a model element, similar to the material keynote. The main difference from the keynote is that the tag does not use an external TXT file to read additional information about the tagged element. The default material tag will display the material description value um, as opposed to the keynote value. You can always customize the material tag to display other values, such as mark. Now, hold that thought. Hopefully, this view will, um, just give me a second. I want to get the right view so um, we could, um, mm, hopefully there's some, we talked about the walls not having the um, tags installed. Let's just see if I can get the material tag from this wall or I can just draw another wall. Let me just double check something. All right, so the material tag, uh, right here. I'll read the tooltip. Tags a selected element using the description specified for its material. The material displayed in the tag is based on the value of the description field of the identity tag, tab of the material's dialog. Right? Read it, read it to yourself again. The material displayed in the tag is based on the value of the description field of the identity tab of the material's dialog. Right? It's based on the description. So if I was to select this wall and go to its type properties, and we look down here, description, there is no description. 
um, uh, I'm just going to put something in uh, thermal. Uh, now I want to put in. Um, I want to assign it to a. Uh, you want to assign it to uh, a condoc, right? A condoc code, a keynote, uh, so that it can pull from there, right? But they're saying, uh, -uh it doesn't. That your first initial thought is maybe assign it to the txt file, grab it from condoc, so it pulls it from the division description, and then it'll assign a keynote to it. But this isn't what we're doing, right? We're gonna um, we're gonna try to assign this a tag to go back to a schedule. Right, so again, this could be some type of wall schedule. Maybe I can put in a description. Um, how about a BR two or a soda lime glass or plywood sheathing grade, common brick soldier course or something like that. So let me just hit this for a second. Hit apply. Okay. Let's go to tag um, material tag. Let's see what we get. Yeah, no material tags are loaded, so that's okay. We can go up to architectural material tag by default. We'll load it. And then you can see here, we have one here, exterior finish. What else we got? And you got a place, this remember it's a three point tool. We've got nothing there, nothing there, no description there, no description here, no description, just exterior finish on that one. Let's take a look at the wall section again, see if we can get one here. Um, we get the material tag loaded. Exterior finish. No, the whole wall itself. The roof doesn't have anything. None of these thermal membranes to, to the, the curtain wall doesn't. None of these framing. Well, we got interior finish, exterior finish. So we do have interior finish, which is that. And I could turn off um, thick lines here so we can see exactly what we're picking. Interior. That's nothing. Interior finish. Nothing. That membrane doesn't have anything as well. So this is interior finish. Right? And we can maybe move it over. And there's no box around it. But as you can see, that's the general concept behind how you tag. Right? Within the descripting or the descriptive tag. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the multi-category tag. Multi-category tag. The multi-category tag allows you to use the same tag style in a project to tag elements of different categories. Coffee. This tag type can be useful in a number of ways. Let's say you want to tag several elements in a floor plan and call out their manufacturer and unit cost. Typically, you would have to create a few different tag families to tag furniture, casework, lighting, and so on. However, the multi-category tag can do this for you by tagging the same field, such as manufacturer or unit cost, unit cost across different element types. Let's step through making a multi-category tag. Now, let's, uh, let's hold it there. So we'll consider this tagging part two, and um, we'll get into the, uh, the multi-category tag in the next exercise. So if you haven't already, please, from the book's webpage, download the C-19 Sample Building Start RVT or C-19 Sample uh, Metric hyphen Start file or continue with the exercise from the previous version. And then we're going to follow a series of steps. Step per recordum.